question that came up recently. Learning to code with books versus video. So what's your opinion, Steph? Now, for the record, I have a book. Super high reviews, by the way, almost 100% five stars. So this is a book for beginners, web design, HTML, CSS, the web in general, the infrastructure of the web. This is a casual read, lots of pretty pictures. I wrote this in 215, but it's not dated because I wrote this to be evergreen. I teach the foundations here. Everything I talk about here is 100% applicable today. Anyhow, that said, I think there's huge advantages to video, but you know what? I'll cut to the chase because I know some of you are busy. If you want to learn how to code as quickly and as efficiently as, as possible, the best combination is both written and video. Written and video. Now, why is that the case? Well, sometimes it's good to uh, be able to review the code that's been written down so you can see it in a book, you can see the code, you can see it written down. And if you're going through the book and you're learning and you can go back, what was that code he wrote? And just go back to the page. It's very simple. You can take a look, you can review it, see it. Whereas if you have a lot of video courses out there, they have these 20 minute or 15 minute or half an hour long videos where they got information buried deep in there. And it's a little bit more difficult to review particular pieces of code or particular bits of information because it's deep inside of a big video. Now, to solve that problem with my own video courses in the Studio Web platform is that the videos are on average six minutes a piece. They're designed specifically as a reference. So you do the course, you learn your material very quickly, but if you want to go back to one of the hundreds and hundreds of lessons, hundreds of videos, easy to pinpoint exactly what particular piece of code or information that you want to check out. So it's kind of a combination of both. But there's more about that as well. When you're learning to code, as I tell people all the time, it's very important that you actually, you actually write the code down, write it down, or type it out rather, or both. So with Studio Web, and then I'm shamelessly self-promoting, I admit it. It's a unique system that we built from scratch based on what I know about teaching code. I've been teaching code since 2002 about. And um, what I can tell you is that you have to have people, you have to have students writing a code out as quickly as they learn about something. That's why we have hundreds of lessons, each lesson's a video, and well over a thousand quiz questions. Sometimes it's multiple choice, sometimes it's code challenges. The idea there is that you have to engage with the material that you just learned. If you just sit there and you passively read pages from the book or watch videos for half an hour and not actually type out code, this is when you're actually learning the nuts and bolts of actual writing the code. You're not gonna retain it. And it's gonna take you far longer than it needs to be if you wanna learn how to code. So that's why, uh, actually when I wrote this book, uh, I was approached by a major publisher and said, okay, let's, you wanna write a book? Sure, fine. It's, you can still find it in bookstores, find it on Amazon and um, around the world. And I wrote this book as a way to help me really structure and plan out the new curriculum, the new set of courses that we're gonna go into the, later on into Studio Web. And there's nothing like writing a, a book from scratch to do that, because I had a couple of editors. I had a technical editor. I had a, just a, a, writ, a normal writ, writ writing editor. And of course, we had designers who design all. I would sketch out the designs for the book, and then they would just put it, make it look really nice with some of these uh, nice graphics. I'm trying to find nice graphics here, but uh, of course, when you're doing a demo, they never come out. Okay, where are nice graphics? I don't know, like this. That's what I call a nice graphic. Yeah, it's kind of basic, but we got a lot of nice graphics in here. Anyhow, so um, you want a mixture of both, ideally. You want a mixture of, uh, of some writing, in a code course, you want some writing, you want some uh, video, like teaching people how to code in audio, 
would not be a good thing, right? So imagine if it was a pure audio presentation. So let me give you a demo of how it might be if it was just audio only, learning the code. What we have done so far looks okay, but now let's add a background image using this code inside the div CSS selector mark number two. Background dash image colon URL open bracket, open quotes, open bracket, small image dot PNG, close quote, close bracket, semicolon. Next line of code. Background dash position colon right bottom, semicolon. Next line. Back, okay, you get the idea. That would just be like crazy, right? So we've established that audio only for learning detailed coding, not a good idea. Audio would be great, like if I do my, do my podcast where I talk about the big picture issues uh, of software development and coding and entrepreneurial entrepreneurship and uh, freelancing, etc. That makes sense. Audio, you can sit, listen on the go kind of light conversation where we can discuss a topic. That's cool. But when you're getting into the nuts and bolts of the actual code that you write, learning the concepts, writing code, seeing the code interact with the page, written is better than audio, and a combination of video and uh, written is uh, the ideal combination if you want to maximize the learning. So having said all that, in my career, as a uh, when I learned how to code back in the 90s, it was all books. Why? Because there's no such thing as a video course at the time. At least, they were not accessible, video code courses anyway. And in fact, I know that because I had one of the first video code courses in the world. I had a PHP OOP course and a PHP course and a JavaScript course way back in like 2002 or something. So I had one of the first. So I know that there wasn't many out there. I learned that from books, books like this. So all these different subjects. I, this is a, I just grabbed these off the shelf. This is like less than 5% of the books I've had, literally hundreds of books. And I, I don't know why I kept these. Like regular expressions, this is evergreen stuff. This never goes away. This is uh, the most advanced string parsing modules that you can get, and all the languages have it, whether it be Java, JavaScript, PHP, Ruby, Python. They all have Perl, of course, regular expression, super powerful, very cryptic language, sub-language, meta-language. So uh, it's like a, once you've learned all your, your fundamentals and architectures and databases and stuff, I would say learn a little bit about RE, regex, not RE, regex, super important. Another important book, again, you don't have to get these. I'm not saying get these. I wouldn't bother uh, at this point. And uh, later on, when you need it. This is the HTTP Developer's Handbook. This is a book written way back in the day. When was this book published? This book was published in 2003. And uh, yeah, this book is cool because it really teaches the underlying, the underlying architecture of the internet and the web. HTTP, well, the web, HTTP, and uh, it really helps you to understand how things work behind the scenes. But don't worry, I teach the basics of that in my HTML course, in my CSS course, in my JavaScript course. This is going to surprise people. Evil book. This is one of the seminal books on programming. It's uh, written by this guy, uh, Fowler, right? Yeah. There we go. And uh, yeah, Martin Fowler, there we go. And uh, it's called refactoring. It's all done in Java, but it teach you, teaches you how to basically how to clean up your code. And everything that you learn in this book, it applies to all languages. Of course, the, all the examples are in Java, it doesn't matter. This is universal principles. I bought this book way back in the day. Yeah, 1999. 1999, I bought this book the hardcover, and uh, I bought it and kept it because it's such an important book. Even though this book is like 800,000 years old, it's still 100% viable. So after you've done all my courses and your coding projects and you're starting to build things, this is a book I would recommend or something similar to this, a refactoring book. This will make you a much better coder than learning Node.js or trying to learn some other uh, framework or a library. Learn to refactor code and you're going to be highly appreciated wherever you happen to find yourself working as a developer. Uh, another basic book. I bought this book. Oh, this was actually sent to me as a review copy. Design patterns. I spoke about this in other videos. Design patterns are basically uh, set structures 
that are uh, used in programming that we know work given certain situations. So this is a later book for me, 2004. Um, but it t again, it's all Java based. But it looks at different ways of optimizing uh, your code, writing your code in a way that makes sense. Now, why do we have design patterns? They're named patterns. And they're named patterns. Like one of the named patterns is called MVC, Model View Controller. This was developed by a couple by Smalltalk, the Smalltalk language, the Smalltalk developers. And it was later really pushed forward into uh, the Java people, really pushed it out, and then Rails people, and then everybody went into MVC. MVC is very, very common. It's a way of, it's a broad structure for all modern day apps today. Mostly web apps, but all modern apps, even iOS apps and Android, it's all MVC, Model View Controller. I won't get into details. Again, this is one of these old books, after you get into you do my the foundation training, you start writing code, learn some refactoring. Maybe you don't have to buy a book. You don't have to get a video. Maybe you could just do a couple quick tutorials on the web. Then maybe get into uh, design patterns. Design patterns, that's very cool. It, because one of the uses of design patterns is it just teaches you uh, ways, standardized ways that people have discovered, developers have discovered is a good way to solve certain problems, the way you structure your code. It doesn't matter of the language. It applies to all languages. And it's also a good way to communicate with people. You can say, we're going to use uh, an iterator here. They know if you're a programmer, you know your design patterns, you know what that is. Oh, we want to use MVC here. OK, cool. Uh, we're going to use uh, Model 1. It is such a simple thing. If you know your design patterns, you're going to know what that means. So it's a good way of communication. So that comes into handy when it comes in handy rather when you are uh, building apps with several people. Ah, this is one of my favorite books. One of my favorite books. And when was this thing? 1999. Another 1999 book. Basics of SQL. Again, you don't have to get these titles. These are dated titles. I'm going to sound like a total nerd now. The reason I keep these books are largely, now that I refer to them, is because they have an emotional appeal to me. They have an emotional draw to me. They, they remind me of that time when I was uh, jumping into coding and building things like crazy and I was started to make a ton of money because I was in such high demand as a freelancer. So 1999, I bought this book. It taught me all the basics of uh, accessing databases. SQL, such an important language. Uh, these are more recent books. When I decided to get into Python, I bought these books recently. When I was designing my course, one of the things I check out to see what other people do. And this is HTML5. So these are cool books. And uh, yeah, there you go. So I learned from books because videos weren't there. When it comes to learning the nuts and bolts and the foundations of programming, I believe it should be a blend of written material and video material. That's why Studio Web has literally a book full of questions. Like my book here is 224 pages, 224 pages. I think when edited down, it's about 30,000, 25,000, 30,000 words, I forget now. My quizzing components, just with the few, first few courses in Studio Web, are about the same amount of words. That's how extensive the quizzing is. So uh, it's very important. As I tell people, the videos are super important, of course, in my courses, my videos are important, but the quizzing is just as important. The, the, the quizzing works hand in hand with the uh with the videos to create that uh, that uh, that hyper effective training environment and training uh just just outcome with uh with a co with the code courses so there you go so um also when it comes to whether you re learn to code with books or video sometimes it comes down to choice i think like i said if i was doing uh, like learning things like refactoring and stuff and design patterns, books are great because it's a lot of it is it's 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 uh, I'm not gonna, I don't want to say theoretical, but for lack of terms, it's theoretical it's because it's very practical application what you're learning in these things with refactoring and design patterns, but it's more of, of a conceptual uh, dissemination of knowledge in these books rather than technical or uh, mechanical. The sentiment, uh, a mechanical presentation of knowledge, if you will. I don't know if that makes any sense. Probably doesn't. Anyway, trust trust me on that one. When you start with the basics, 
I think the nice blend of the two makes sense. I wrote this book um, to stand alone, um, and it gets into a lot of detail uh, about uh, about the web that you won't see in most code courses or any, I, I don't believe. So for example, I got these takeaway, these side boxes I put in there, like uh, what can affect the cost of hosting a website? <clears throat> so I get into that as well. I talk about traffic, extra features, databases, etc. Or I get in things like this. How do you know if a domain name is already taken? So I get into all of that, you know. Little things like that, just little tidbits, links versus hyperlinks, you know. Uh, what about SEO? What about SEO? This is technically not code, but if you're going to be a professional in the web space, you got to know these things. And that's one of the big weaknesses I saw in a lot of the code courses out there is they teach the nuts and bolts of the code, but they don't actually teach coding where you have to understand uh, these things that I just talked about, those couple examples. I think that's it for now. I just wanted to be transparent in the fact that I learned how to code with books because there's no videos. Ideally, it should be a blend of video and written. And whatever you do, my two tips in terms of learning to code, number one, better to do 20 minutes a day than to try to do four hours one day. 20 minutes a day, that continuous exposure on a regular basis is going to con convince your brain, it's going to tell your brain, oh, this coding stuff's important. Maybe I should put a little effort into learning it. So you're going to find that remembering, retaining the information and the concepts will come much quicker with a frequency of exposure that's increased, meaning more often. So better every day, just a little bit. So if you're learning to code, let's say you're learning to code Studio Web now, and you're on the JavaScript and you blast it through the HTML like so many do and you get into, got into the CSS and you're, you're hitting some, you know, hey, I've done like 250 videos, you know, I've done answer to 600 questions over a period of time, maybe I need a break. Take a little break, but do at least 20 minutes that day. Even if it bothers you, that's the big, best thing. That's why I designed the system the way it is. You log in, remembers where you were, you go continue. It takes you right where you were. You can review the questions. You can review the videos real quickly because they're only six-minute videos, not 20-minute videos. And you can jump right into it. Just do a few, do one or two videos, answer the questions, and you're done. You get that exposure for days. like doing exercise, like doing daily exercise or by, by daily exercise. That regular exposure is such an important part of the learning process. Number two, you want to write code. You want to write code. That's why, again, was in, the, in my custom SaaS, I'm shamelessly self-promoting, but I'm telling you why I did it. It's because you got to have people writing code every day, even just a few lines of code, even just a few lines of code. Amazingly, by writing the code, it actually um, helps w with comprehension. It's a strange phenomenon, I know, but when the brain sees that you're typing it out, I think it's that tactile feel of the fingers, that tactile feel. That tactile feeling causes the brain to say, okay, this is more important, this is more important, because it's, 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 it's associating coding with touching. It's weird, I know, it's weird, but, so that's why writing code, answering questions, engaging with the material, helps a lot and speeds you up in terms of learning how to do this stuff rather than passively reading a book or passively sitting back watching a video. That's it for now. Bye-bye.